Hello everybody and good day. This is Fred with Tech Talk and Wentworth CCTV of New England. And we are coming at you today with a video on these KU Wi-Fi 900 Mbps 5 gigahertz point-to-point -point bridges. As many of you know, we have a chipset shortage right now and these bridges are hard to come by. So we did a video on this particular bridge and a lot of you have had problems with them becoming unpaired. Okay, when they ship from the manufacturer, they are paired. I've worked with a bunch of them, they're paired. But techies being techies, uh, you have to log into them and play with configuration settings to, to see what you can do. Uh, and with this product, it's very easy to unpair them. Uh, and it's somewhat difficult to repair them. So we decided to do a video on the pairing process, how to restore these and pair them so they will work like they did when they shipped to you. It's a relatively simple video. We're gonna cover it all right now. All right, everybody, what do you say? Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Before we do, you know the drill. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Please click that and subscribe to our channel. That way you can be notified when you upload future content. Also, like the video if it's useful to you, and as always, leave comments. This video is based on a bunch of comments and emails and phone calls I've gotten on these, these bridge kits. So what we need to do... Um, if they have become disconnected, the first thing you need to do is log into the bridge individually. Okay, there's two of them. There's a host, um, which has a selector switch right here, um, as does the client. The host, the switch needs to be on H. Okay, and this should be at the location of the NVR or the modem or PoE switch where your internet source is, okay? So if you're doing an installation at your house and putting a camera on your garage, the host access point or bridge should be on your house. And it has a PoE switch. The PoE port should go to the access point or bridge. The LAN goes to your modem or router, right? So internet goes to LAN, PoE to the outgoing bridge, which is your host. Now you also have a receiving or client bridge. On that, the selector switch here, will be on C, not H. It's not the host, it's a client. And it's set up pretty much the same way. You have a PoE injector. The access point plugs into that. The LAN, the LAN would go to your secu security camera, okay? If your security camera is an IP camera, a PoE camera, the camera, the LAN uh, port of the Ethernet pigtail will be plugged into a PoE switch. This LAN port must also be plugged into that PoE switch, okay? So the camera is connected to the PoE injector that's transferred through this client bridge that's on your garage to the host bridge that's on your house, and the camera feed can connect to the MVR, okay? So like I said, these are pre-configured and paired when you get them, but oftentimes people log into them, mess up the settings, something happens, they become unpaired. So how do we fix that, Fred? Very easily. Okay, it's not difficult. The first thing you're going to do is log into the bridge. Okay, by default, the IP address of the H bridge is 192 period 168 period 188 period 253. Okay, so we're going to log into that, and in the settings, the configuration settings, there is a reset to default option. We're going to do the same thing with the client bridge, okay? You're going to have to take it down. You're going to have to bring it into the house, plug it in, log into it at 192 period, 168 period, 188 period, 100, okay? And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go into the settings, and you're going to restall it to ta factory defaults uh, using uh, that method, okay? When you're done, when you're done with that, we are also going to have to pair them, okay? And we're going to have to cut and paste some MAC addresses. So let's first switch view. I'm going to log into one of these and walk you through how you reset the device, okay? So let's do that. All right, kids, as you can see, I have typed in the IP address of the host bridge, 192 period, 168 period, 188 period, 253. Um, you want to type that in your address bar, just like this. You do not need to type the CGI-BIN, all that junk. 
Um, that is only in there because I have previously logged into this bridge, so it knows that, okay? But this is what you want to type right here, 192 period, 168 period, 188 period, 253. Once you do that and enter, uh, you're going to be at the login prompt. These ship with a login password of admin, all lowercase, A-D-M-I-N, okay? Just like this, admin. Once you do that, you can log into the bridge. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Let me make sure I'm connected here. Let's connect to the internet, and then we might have better luck. Okay. All right. So here we are. We're logged into the bridge. Um, as you can see, uh, we have upstream and downstream data. So this bridge is currently connected to a client and we're going to mess that up. Okay. Uh, because that's why you're watching this video. We messed it up. So we're going to go to the manage icon right here on the left. Hopefully you can see it over my face, uh, cause I'm right here, but there's a manage icon right below network with a star. We're going to click on that. And then one of our options here in the bottom is reset default. This restores the factory default settings. Press this button. Okay. That's what we want to do, kids. We want to reset this to a factory default. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to enter OK right here. Um, and you'll see the equipment is being reset. Okay. So you're going to do this to both. You're going to do this to the host at 192.168.188.253. And like I said, you're going to take the client down from wherever it is, bring it in, uh, plug it into the PoE injector, into your internet, so you can get it with your laptop or PC, and you're going to reset that as well. Okay, so go to 192, period 168, period 188, period 100, and do the same reset process. Okay, and I will meet you on the other end once you've done that. We are now logged into the client bridge, or about to log into the client bridge. I did want to mention there may be some people on this video uh, that do not know how to change your Ethernet adapter. Um, to communicate on another gateway. In other words, if you're plugged into your network um, and you have a Linksys router that has you on a gateway of 192.168.1.1, uh, you will not be able to connect to these access points or bridges um, logging in that way. So what you need to do is on your keyboard, you will see a Windows button. It's off, off, often a white square with four boxes, uh, the window symbol. You press that along with the letter X on your keyboard and you will get this prompt. And we want to go to network connections right here. Okay. This is a Windows 11 computer. It's very similar with Windows 10. But what you want to do is pick your Ethernet connection. If you are hardwired, if you're on Wi-Fi, you would pick Wi-Fi. But we are hardwired, so I'm going to click Ethernet. And right here where it says IP assignment, okay, we'll want to hit edit. And by default, your computer is probably on automatic or DHCP. You want to switch to manual and you want to put your computer on the same gateway uh, or subnet as, as your access point. So in IP address, this will be blank. You want to type 192 period, 168 period, 188.5. Okay, subnet mass should be 255 period 255 period 255 period zero. That's very important. That will allow your computer, your PC to communicate with the access point through the network. Okay. So I did want to show you that most of you tech gurus already know that and have done that and that's good. But, um, some of us are still learning. So let's type in the same thing. Admin here. And we will go ahead and factory reset this as well. Okay. All right. We'll give this a minute to reset. Um, once it resets, we will start with the host at 192.168.188.253 and make sure everything looks right. Uh, we'll then log into this client, uh, make some adjustments, and we will repair these for you guys. Okay. All right. So the client is restoring the factory default. Um, the host or the bridge that is connected uh, at the internet source, as you can see, I'm logged into that again after it has reset and we see no more 
upstream and downstream activity. That's because they are no longer connected. Okay. And this is where people, this is where people are at. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Wi-Fi settings here. Okay. And we want to make sure Wi-Fi is enabled. First of all, if, if the antenna is shut off, it's not going to be putting out the SSID. Okay. Um, we can also change the default Wi-Fi password is the six, the eight sixes. You can change that, and I recommend changing it to something specific. Okay, let's do that. Okay, and then we're going to hit apply. Everything looks good here. So we know our broadcast is enabled. Um, the channel's on auto. The bandwidth twenty. We've left the encryption as encrypted, and we've created our own password. Okay, that's all we're going to do with the host bridge. But we will have to copy the MAC address, okay, because we need to input that onto the client. So we're going to come here to home, and you will see two MAC addresses. There is a LAN MAC address uh, for when you are connected to the Internet. Uh, there's also a wireless, okay, a Wi-Fi information MAC address. That's the MAC address we want to cut and paste into the uh, client. So what we're going to do is highlight that, click these dots, and hit copy, okay? So you're going to right-click on it, hit copy, just like that. And then we are going to log into the client. All right, now let's log into our client at 192 period 168 period 188, period 100. We're going to put admin for our credentials. All right. <clears throat> we want to make sure it's in repeater mode, which it is, okay? After you factory default it, it will automatically do that. So you don't have to worry about that. We're going to go to our Wi-Fi settings here. We're going to make sure Wi-Fi status is enabled. You're going to change your Wi-Fi password here as well. Whoop, we don't want that. We did 2023. 20, okay. And hit apply. Once that's done, we're going to go to repeater settings. Okay. These take a minute to respond and save. So we'll be patient. All right. Come on. There we go. Repeater settings. <coughs> We'll want to make sure repeater status is on, okay? We're going to, where it says lock SSID, we're going to turn that on, and we're going to paste the host bridges MAC address right here, okay? This is letting this client know, hey, we want you to connect and lock, clone yourself, pair to this access point, okay? You're going to leave the encryption here, and you're going to re-enter for a third time, your SSID password. Okay, then we're going to hit apply. It's saving the changes. All right, so we are at the last step. Okay, there's one more step, and that is using the reset button located on the access point itself. Okay, to to pair the devices. So what you're going to do, if you take the lid, the cover off of the bridge. Hopefully you can see this here. If you take the cover off of the bridge, um, on the inside, on the inside, there's going to be a button right here that says reset. Okay. You're just going to press that for two seconds and let go. And the led on here will have a P meaning pairing, um, with some dots doing a circle and it will go through a process for about 30 seconds. The trick is you want to do both of these uh, relatively quickly. They don't, have, they don't have to be at the same time, but you should start one pairing. Uh, I start with the client first and then go to the host um, within five seconds or so and start pairing that. And you will see that they pair together. Okay. Once they do that, they should link together. So let's go ahead and do that together. All right, folks, there we go. We have our link connection reestablished. You see there's upstream and downstream activity again. Uh, we also see our signal strength is minus 32 dBm with the link quality of 100. That's what we're looking for. Um, again, dBm is backwards. It goes from 0 to 100. 
And as you get lower, that would indicate the stronger signal. So, you know, from zero to about 55 or 60 uh, is a good signal. Um, from 65, say, to 100, as you get closer to 100, is a weak, unusable signal. So you want that sweet spot kind of in between 30 and 50, 60 at the most. So um, this is a frustrating process. We don't uh, manufacture these KU Wi-Fi bridges, um, but we've been forced to use them, right? There's a chipset shortage. The end station 5 ACs by Ingenious are hard to come by. Um, same with Ubiquity, you know. So this solution is readily available, and it's a good price point. Less than $100, you can get a set of these bridges. And as I told you, they work. I've employed them in marinas and harsh environments and campgrounds, you know, half a mile away with, with line of sight, and they work. Um, they advertise 900 Mbps. You see it up here. Uh, it's not going to give you a gig. It's not going to give you 900. Uh, it will give you 300 a max, but that's plenty for security cameras um, or a small to medium grade, you know, wireless network, a, a couple of access points that are only going to have a couple clients on it that will work. So it is a viable solution. And uh, sometimes you have to go through the process we, we talked about more than once, particularly with the pairing button. Okay. If the pairing button doesn't work the first time, give it five minutes. Uh, do it again. Sometimes you'll have to do it two or three times. It's, it's just the product, but they will link. Okay. This one happened to do it the first time, but again, in the field, I've done it and it's taken a, a couple of tries, but it will work. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the field.